Hello everyone, if you are completely new to Arcade 26, this tutorial is made for you. In this tutorial, you will go from knowing nothing about Arcade 26 has to offer to create your first great double story residential project you see. If this seems to be intimidating to you, don't worry, you are covered. This is perfect also for someone who has been using the program but without the proper basics to start the project from scratch and produce great results in no time. All the assets used in this video are completely free so you can follow along with me. This is a long video because Arcade is a big program and a double story project has more features to assemble and I will cover all the steps and explain all tools and features to eventually create your first double story project in Arcade. This video is divided into chapters. Make sure you check the video contents below which is a process that will take you from project site, work, all construction staircase design, doors and window designs, and roof construction to place your final drawings into layouts. You will start the exercise by setting project units and information related to the project. Define project settings, create walls based on the provided sketch, exploring best practices on wall construction to be efficient using Archicad. You will be creating a story setting, access the best graphic settings, and use different approaches to annotate and label the openings, create floors, and set up re representations styles to make graphic appealing drawings. You will place objects for furniture, kitchen cabinetry, sanitary objects and other objects to make your drawing fully readable and interesting without any extra add-ons. Set up a room tags for all the spaces and use a label to display room data parametrically. Lastly, place some dimensions to your plan and use various methods such as automated dimensions to speed up your workflow. With that being said, let's jump straight into Arcade 26. Alright, before we assemble the project, we need to set up the project settings. Let's go to the top menu bar and then open options. Let's move down here to project preferences and open working units. Under here, we're going to try to set everything into um, millimeters in terms of working units, except the area unit. We're going to be measuring it using square meters. This depends or differ from country to country and it depends on the region where you are. I'll go down here and hit OK. Once we've set the project settings, let's come here to the right under the project navigator. We're trying to set up the project stories. Let's right click in one of the stories here or right click on ground and then open the story settings. What we're trying to do here is to set up the structure of our levels. So I'm going to insert another story below the ground level. So make sure you selected the ground level um, story and then insert below. We're going to set this to be a foundation foundation level and then the height of this level is going to be 1000 millimeters or 1 meters. And then um, the story uh, height for the ground is 3 meters. All the stories are 3 meters high which is um, perfect for this. So what I'll do, I'll rename the story 2 to be roof because it's a double story um, house. So I'm going to have only four stories, foundation, uh, ground floor, and then we have this one as first floor, first floor level. Perfect. So once you're done with this, you hit OK to apply the changes to your, your stories here on the project uh, map, as you can see. And then from here, we need to load the sketch that we're going to use for this um, demonstration over this project. Let's go to file and interoperability. Let's move merge, merge from file. And uh, let's locate the folder where the, where the project is. So, oh, sorry, let me just YouTube 2023 videos double story. And then make sure you go down here under file type and change this to a double DWG because it's an AutoCAD file. So I'll click the file and then hit open to load it. Once you, um, once this window pop ups, just hit OK and ignore everything and wait for it to load. Let's skip all from this window and then let's ignore everything here and go straight down here to merge. So graphically, this is your content or your file. Uh, to place it, you need to click. I will click on one of the, or this origin point here, click and then you hit OK once you're done. Perfect. Now your files are in here. What you need to do is to do the project info settings, which is handling the information that is related to this project, information such as this. So what I will do, I will go to file and 
um, let's go for info predict info so I'm gonna just move it here okay let me just close it so that I can set up this window first okay let's go back file info project info there we go so what we need to do here is to reflect everything that this project is all about so I'm gonna start with the project name this is going to be 3.2 bedroom bedroom duplex house duplex houses um, I can use the same as a description and then I'll give it a code MS 2023 the code and the ID will be the same and the number status is going to be um, let me use it's going to be concept development right so yeah once we're done with the project details let's move down here on the site you can also do the same to your site full address like that but for this case i don't know let me just do it let me just do it i would say you can click on the three dots to extend or to extend your window let's say Haboromi. That will be the site details, site description. I'm not going to do that. Site area also, I'm not going to do that. Let's move down here under the building details. So, under building details, that's what we're going to try to um, put in this information. Already, we don't have the parameters for this type of information. We're going to create our own. So, I'm going to select the category there, the category name, and then hit on add. We're going to add a plot area. But we have plot area on that one on the side details let's say for example that's what is been it's going to be like that right and then we have um, add another one for length area this is supposed to be 53 meters squared let's add another one for for first oh sorry first floor area first floor area is going to be 60 meters squared hit add again we have a carport area this is two number base. We go for domestic helper unit. It's going to be zero because we don't have the unit in this area. Okay, once you're done, you can hit okay. The important the importance of this because um, the uh, feature is because you can add some information that is typical to project to project, and you can just do it once and then you always export and import it into a new project. Information such as the contact details for the company, this is always a standard. So, you'd want to export this and always import this information to your project. Similar applies to this kind of whatever we added already on this so you don't want to be adding or creating this again and again in a different project so the best way is to export this and keep it safe once you open a new project or once you're doing a new project you just load this into your project so i'll hit ok and then you would see in later stages when we're, when we're doing uh, layer drawings how in this information is key so from here we are set to go what we need to do is to set up our story um, layout so i'm gonna select this one also to make sure the suspend groups is active and then we select that um, in archicad 2 there are different ways of selecting so you have to be smart when you're doing selection in this case there is this element that i don't want to select but i just want to select only this only the sketch how do you go about that you can just select using um this selection type and then you shift and hold and click 
on the element that you want to deselect. There's another selection um, tool again, which is uh, under here. If you click click this array to give you these three types of selections, we have this one where we need to enclose an element in order for select it. So let's see how it works. So I would have to close enclose this to select only that. I think it's a smart way, especially when you're dealing with a complex project where there are a lot of elements to select. So this is how you can go about it. What I'll do, I'll right click and then cut this information. And then, uh, oh, sorry, I've placed this information under the first floor. So I would say undo. What I need to cut is this one, is the ground. Let's select it and then cut. Let's move down to the ground floor level and right click and paste it here. Click outside the marquee to complete your pasting operation. By all due respect, make sure all every time when you are placing a project, it's near the origin point. This will help you to even for sharing this information with other different platforms for different um, for different uh, disciplines. So you'd always want to relate your project with this project origin. So once you're done with placing or pasting the ground floor information here, let's go back to the first floor. What we need to do is to select this and align it with the sketch for ground so to align it we need to trace it here so to trace i can right click on ground and then say show as trace reference so you can come here at the top and then activate trace and then if you hit on this arrow you can choose the reference uh, story you want to um, trace in this case already it's selected ground floor because i already assigned it as a trace reference so what i would do i hit ctrl d to move this by this point and align it with the ground floor sketch. So once you're happy, everything is sitting the way you want, it's time for us to start doing the model work. Okay, before we start doing the model work, what I want to do is to select all the elevation markers. So to select them all, I can come here under viewpoints and then select or activate the elevation tool and then hit Control A in your keyboard to select all the elements. Or you can just say pick parameters, pick parameter tool here and then use pick one of the elevation marker. You can hit Control A. So this it across it's across all the elements in in Archicad. So from here I'll open the elevation settings. What I want to do is to set the marker. Let's get the marker to be on 10 millimeters um, uh, big and then let's go down here under the marker symbol and text. Let's make it something that we are used to, something which is traditional. I'll go with the circle three and then if you click on the this arrow to move, to open the next page, this is where you can customize what is going to be displaying in your template, in your, 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 your elevation marker. So what I'll do I would say I want to show the ID and then um, the name as well. So hit OK. That's how it is on here. All right. I think we might we might need to what can we do? We might need to uh, increase the size of the of the marker again. But I don't think it's fine. I think it's fine. Let's just leave it the way it is. Let's open move. And open the ground floor level and start our construction so we're gonna do uh, the wall construction first let's go to the design tool palette and then open wall tool from the wall tool it will give you the information under project info about this wall which is uh, the parameters to define for our wall so what i want is to change the structure to be just a basic and then the material is going to be a brick structural and then uh, we scroll down and find the levels. I'm going to link it with the floor, first floor uh, story, and then by total it will give me it will inherit the height of that particular um, story, which is three meters. So what I want to do is to change the thickness of the wall to be 230. In my region, the exterior walls are 230, and also this depends from country to country, uh, depends on where you are. So. Once you are done with the setting of your wall, you can um, start placing the wall. So there are different types of placement of a wall in Archicad. We have the first one here, which is the straight um, placement. And then we have 
under state placement we have different types of placing we can use a single wall placement or multiple wall placement which is continuous and then we have the rectangle placement and then rotated rectangle placement these are different types of placing your walls um, in arcade we also have the um, curved walls where we can do uh, some curved walls and then we have some trapezoid wall and uh, polygonal uh, method i'm gonna go with this one which is the straight one let's start by clicking oh sorry i'm gonna start by drawing this area first and clearly you can see the wall is it outside um the way it's supposed to be to change this you can come here and set it to the inside it will be fine or you can just let's do you can just use uh, this um to turn the reference line location just like that i think this is also important because you can instantly do that once you end the process of placement of placing the wall so what i'll do i'll just draw it to this area and then right click and then hit okay there we go our wall is being placed so we need to place other walls like that so instead of redoing it again i'll take advantage of this wall and make a copy let's select it and then make a copy i'm just gonna select one of the points and then on the pet palette let's uh, find drag tool once you've dragged this wall we'll hit um, control in your keyboard to add a copy so that you can drag a copy you would see with this a plus plus side that you are getting a copy i'll just place it here and then make sure i pick one of these points i want to stretch it by the stretch tool to some way there and then do the same to here and then i'll do the same again let's pick one of the points and then activate drag hit control in your keyboard to add a copy so that uh, you can place it on this other side you can also mirror copy instead of just copying like that so we have now the horizontal walls i'm gonna um, hit w in your keyboard to repeat the last command for wall placement so i would uh, start from here let's start from here and place it to this corner right click and then hit ok once you are done and uh, we have this ones here i'll say this that one and this i think you are having a recess i guess this being a recess there then that means we need to trim off this one so to trim you go to trim here or you or you hit you press control control hold in your keyboard and then you can now click in element that you want to trim like so All right so now we have this type of design okay let's move down and we have also some a uh, couple of um, 230s or, or structural walls here i'll pick parameters of this one and then just draw like that click do the same to this one we have another wall here another one here all right so this i can mirror it um, let me, let's make, make sure you suspend group and then if you right click go under move there is a, a mirror um mirror I copy so i would use this line as a center of of mirroring just like that okay so let's do the 115 wall which is for this area activate w to repeat the last uh the previous um command and then let's change this to 115 oh, sorry and then i'm gonna start by this area draw it like that okay let's select and make a copy let's right click and bring the mirror copy we may write uh, vertical like that okay i think we're done with our placement of walls what we need to do is to move on to the next um the next level which is the first floor and then from here i can just to speed up the work i can select all these ones all these walls that i know oh sorry so to deselect this i can just hit um hold shift in your keyboard and then click just like that 
so i want to add a selection of this wall let's right click and copy move up to the first floor right click and paste using the original location to paste that all right so oh, we left this one so let's go back to the ground select this walls copy let's go back to the first floor right click and paste all right great so we need now to do the internal walls so we're gonna start um by w to activate the previous command or you can just pick the parameters or one of this and then scroll down in the info box set the thickness to 115 and must start trace oh let's turn the reference line to the inside using this tool and place it here I think this is the only area with the 115 forms. I'll select this and control shift M. That is to mirror a copy. It's a shortcut to mirror a copy. So mirror it vertically like that. We also have this area for the bathroom as well. Oh, sorry. To deselect, like I said, you shift and hold and click on the element that you want to deselect. If you want to add another copy, add a selection to this um, existing selection, you shift and again click on the element to add like that once you're done you hit ctrl shift m as a shortcut for mirroring a copy so this time i'm going to mirror it um, vertical so mirror it horizontal like that but make sure it's on the right position i'll move it to the right position like that okay we have another one here for the closet let's pick parameters of this by holding alt in your keyboard and click on the element so i'm gonna draw it there we must have some here as well let's place the wall there okay i think I've, we're done with all the placement of the walls so if and let me switch off the trees all right i think everything is super let's go back on uh, ground and activate 3d window to appreciate what we already done all right this is basically what we did and i'm going to select all the walls let's select all the walls by picking or activating the wall tool in the design tool palette and hit ctrl a um, from here what i want to do is to uh, override the surfaces of the of all the walls now open its settings and then here under model let's activate um the surfaces then uh, let's find stuco white fine make sure this are all surfaces are, are linked to change all the size once and then hit ok no i don't think it's the one that i'm looking for let's go back i want rough stuco rough yes all right perfect this is what i want and um uh, it's always a challenge you need to fix this kind of um projections in architect we don't want to see these lines on the surface on this wall surface so to fix this it's either you select that wall make sure the suspend group is active so that you can select only that particular wall and then i'm gonna find the reference line for this wall and then click in one of the points here and then from the pet palette it's going to activate the stretch length once you've, if, um, you've activated the stretch length now you can see your wall you can stretch it without affecting its position so i'm going to reference it with this edge of the wall or this corner so that it can cleans up i'll do the same to this one um, pick one of the points in for the reference and then reference with that do the same to this one as well like so same applies to these ones i don't know you can do it uh, we can do multiple walls let's just see there we go we managed to do all the wall once okay let's move to this direction or this side as well we have some issues to solve let's do that i'm gonna reference with this corner there right now i have pretty clean super clean uh, model so that's basically it's important guys to model well in order for you to extract data from your project so so something like 
here you need to clean up this um, area like that you see this you see there is an issue also on this area uh, also on this one these ones as well I'll fill it them okay right it looks great um already oh we, we missed up this wall let's go back to the ground and select all these walls Control c to copy go back to the first floor let's right click but here we just have a straight wall i don't think it's it's taking the shape of the ground floor let's just pick parameters of this wall of the wall and just draw it turn the reference line reference line location there we go that's right all right so i'm gonna do the slab let's go to the slab 2 and um in the info box make sure the structure is just a basic structure and then the material is going to be a structural concrete structural and uh the height of it i'm going to make it 150. so from there sorry from there to place it um just like the the wall geometry you also have geometry uh, method to place your slab so you have the first one which is geometry method polygonal where i can pick points by points or points or corners of the uh, my project and then i can use the rectangular method and rotated rectangular method i'm going to use the rect uh, rectangular method and then i'm going to pick this point to draw it diagonally to this point that's basically how you do it and check on 3d let's select it open its settings what you need to do is to override the surface the top surface i'm going to override to a, a floor tile let's find floor tile in the list here i think we have this tile 10 30 by 30 let's go for it all right we also have let's go back to the um, ground in recent version of our kit we do have this uh, window tab um that is basically opening the um currently opened it will keep currently open to views so that you can just um toggle between the views like that it, it, it does help much pretty much in terms of speeding up your workflow so we do have another slab here which is our peak parameters of that and then also do the rectangle geometry i'll place it like that we also have another one here let's just place it to there so if we check on 3d that's basically what you have normally the ones that are outside they would step down by a they will step down by maybe 50 millimeters let's just select the two slabs and scroll down here you'd find the home story let's step this down by negative 50 something like that okay so once you're done with the slab placement and it's time now to do the the foundations so i'll open the foundation um view from here i will uh set up my foundation we're going to do the same as well we're going to trace off the ground floor to trace a asset you can right click and then show as trace reference or you can come up here and activate the trace um tab and then you can uh, click on this arrow and choose the um, view that you want to trace for this project footings are going to be just only on the um, load bearing or structural wall so we can achieve that in different ways there are a lot of ways of doing it in archicad but i'm going to go with the best that i thought is the best way of doing it so um this is by using a beam tool so if i come here on the design tool palette is to use a beam let's set the beam if but before we can do anything you need to understand if you to place a beam let's just place a beam it uses the um the x reference line for placement as you can see it's always on the center so that's one thing that you need to be a uh, bearing in your mind so before we set we set it i'm going to make sure the structure is just a normal structure and then set the material to concrete structural and then uh, what we can do here is to set the height and the width the height is going to be 250 
and then this is going to be 690 it should be a double or triple the the thickness of my walls so once you're done it's the time for placing it so i'll select this point draw it to that point so because now it's sitting by the center of the wall it's sitting by the center of the beam so i need to move it on the inside by 200 by 230 so i'm gonna just select it and then control d to move it by by 230 so i think now it's sitting on the right edge you should check on a 3d no i don't i didn't move it by 230 so this center point has to be on the center point of the wall i can even do it on the 3d let's pick this point and then use drag let's just move it by the center point of the wall perfect i think it's the best way of doing it on 3d it looks um easy and quick so i can now come here on the uh, foundation floor and then copy this to the other walls so i can right click then move under move there's a tool called uh, drag multiple copies again needs to improve it needs to add a shortcut to this uh, copy uh, i mean command because it's one of the command that is um, um uh, it will save your time but it has to have a shortcut you know, it's a long way to come here and um, bring it so let's click on that and then what i will do i will uh, select it by the point and then i'll find the midpoint of this wall also find the midpoint of this wall and place if you hit escape it will automatically select all the um placed uh, beams so i can now control g to take advantage of the selection and group it control g is to group or you can go to edit and under grouping you hit group that's the shortcut to learn each and every command shortcut you have to open it and then there is already a shortcut written under the name of that particular command so in case you want to learn that so this one i'm going to um stretch it by this command to all the way to there all right okay so we have the horizontal ones so i can pick parameter of this let's just place place like that hit ok check on 3d where is that wall let's see identify the center point this one is it's not the one that i'm looking for i'm looking for this one you see there's a problem now of using this method of aligning our beam so it's going to give us a lot of problems so the best way to do it um i will uh let me just delete it let's delete it and i'll show you one the best way let's set up a profile for this i'm going to say select that and go to options menu let's find complex profile and then capture profile selection it will give us the our slab our footing sorry what i need to do here is to use uh, this is the origin point for this we are using this to place so i'm gonna select our our fill then let's control d to move it right on the origin point so i'm using now the edge of the of the beam to place this wall no i think because um it has to be 230 let's move it back by 230 yes so that we use this 230 to place our beam on our walls so i can come here and then hit save and then these are the tools that i can use but in this case i'm just going to use the beam and then i'm going to call it um footing then hit ok so once you're done you can close off your complex profile window and then uh, um to place it let's activate the beam tool change the structure to a complex profile and then select the newly created footing you can just type here and then say footing is there and then you can now use the edge of your wall to place this like that now you're pretty sure that it's sitting right on the edge like that I 
and I can be quickly. I can be quick in terms of this, as you can see. We have another one here. We have another two thirty two wall here. And these ones are there. These ones turns all the way like that. Okay. No, no. All right. I think all the two thirty two walls are being assigned a, a footing. So okay, this one needs to go all the way to there. Okay. I don't know why they're not connecting much. Yes, I need to stretch them because it's the same material or in the same element it has to clean up this connection. So I would select the point and then stretch it to the center of that one. It will clean up. Let's do the same to this one. But they are, if they are plenty like this, you can select them once by holding shift and add the elements like that. So to fix this, we can use the adjust tool from the top menu bar and then you choose the center of the beam like that to draw a line like that to clean up nicely. Let's do the same to the side. Shift and hold and select all the elements. Adjust and then you draw the line like that. Okay, perfect. So I'm pretty happy now with the foundation. Um, a footing but I want to do is to select and to select all these guys and then group them control G it's important to group I think we need also to fix this one here let's adjust it to the center of this one all right so to check on a 3d that's basically it but uh, Let's see something here. Okay. So this has to be assigned on the, on the, you could see the, it's been linked on home story, which is ground floor. It has to be on under foundation. Let's suspend all the groups to select all the, the footing and change its home story to be foundation. So that when you see it on 3D, it's stepped down by a meter that's the height of the footing. so we need to have now the footing um the foundation walls foundation is pretty easy i can go to the ground floor and then select all this oh sorry sorry about that let's deselect that by hitting shift and hold <laughs> let's say I'll select all the walls like that. Oh, sorry, deselect. Something like that. Right click, hit control. This wall needs to be corrected. I don't know why. And then come here under foundation. Let's paste it there. So make sure you click outside the MacU to complete the pasting operation. Once you come here on the 3D view, we need to, yeah, I think it's been restricted to the height of that. I like it, as you can see. So if you look at here, let's scroll down here. So it's been restricted to the height of the ground floor, which is around a meter. So that is why it's just at this height. Perfect. Now you can see our structure is becoming um, um, complete now. So we need to differentiate the the materials for our foundation wall because this one is more like it has a finish. And normally for foundation walls, we don't have finish. The bricks or the structure of the brickwork is exposed. So I'll go down to this view and then let's select the wall tool under the tool palette and control A. So I'm going to open its settings and uh, an over or uh, change switch off the override surface and then hit OK. So if you go back, you'd find something like this. This is the way it's supposed to be. Okay.
now because we've uh, assembled our walls let's move on to the next item which is the staircase i'll go down here under ground floor view let's move, um, zoom in here where the staircase is going to be located i'm going to modify this a bit uh i'm going to modify the design a bit instead of having it flashing with this i'm going to introduce some um, a kink here so i would go to the tool palettes and then let's find the documents and open the line tool so i'll draw a line of a meter which is the projection of the staircase from there this will act as a landing for my staircase so it's going to be let me just draw a rectangle so that by using a polyline i'll use a rectangle tool and then draw it from here to there which is going to be a meter by 2.2 all right let's just select it and stretch it by clicking on the edge and then offset edge on the pad palette all right so we need to move it outside click one of the points and then drag it outside like that hit delete this one okay so these walls i'm going to extend let's add suspend groups so that we select only these two walls make sure we adjust them to this edge all right and then i'll pick parameters of that then uh, let's draw it um from the outside by click hit ok I don't know why it's not. Let's change the reference line to be outside so that we can be const, const, I mean, so that we can be. This one is in inside. This one is outside. Let's check on 3D and see what might be the problem of that. Okay, go back here. Because I want to treat this world differently, I would have to trim it by this. Let's just trim it here. To do that, I'm going to use um, a split uh, tool. I'm going to split it here. And then do split again for this one. All right. Then I want to turn the reference to the inside. Then I can now move it back to this position. Let's fillet this two. Do the same. This one, turn the reference line to the inside and then drag it back by 230 if you fillet it now it will be fine same applies to this if you fillet this two i don't know what oh, this line is because of uh, this uh, let's delete it and then this has to be stretched to the inside like that okay so i can now treat this uh differently let me just hit ctrl g to group them let's fix the, this issue as well here all right so now we have uh we have this wall that i will change the surface its surface to let's open its settings and override this to maybe a paint dark green something like that to be just protruding from the surface like that so let's go back to the ground and then we're going to trim off this by control and hold in your keyboard to activate trim then you can just trim like that this one on five wall has to um let's just stretch it to there but before it's because it's a it's a grouped um, elements we need to unsuspend that so that we can now stretch it to the edge like that Okay, this is the modification that I was wanted to do in for this design. So from here, I can now select all this to the other side. Let's select this and mirror a copy by hitting Control Shift M, and then I'm going to use this line as a reference. Let's mirror it to the other side like that, and do the same um, treatment for this wall. I want to trim it off like that, and then this, this. One on five wall is going to be stretched all the way to there. All right. Now let's start placement of our of our staircase. So we need to go to design tool palette and activate our stay tool. Let's open its settings, and then I'm going to set the width of this to nine seven five, and um, I would want to set a 
a custom or a, or a fixed um what you call a fixed uh, going i want the going to be two two feet if it refuses you know that the number has to change for the risers i will make the risers to be 17 so that it can accommodate this width let's go for 16 should be I don't know why it's refusing. 230. Alright, you now let's let's just leave it the way it is. Um I'm gonna change to 17. Okay, and then uh, let's go back here and then hit OK to place your staircase. Um we're gonna use uh, this line as a reference, this wall as a reference. I'm gonna start with this point and then drag all the way to here maybe around the around eight nine ten around ten click and then you can introduce your landing from the pet palette once you introduce the landing you have to click from this point to the one on five now we're turning like that uh, but we're turning using a straight flight we need to change our mode to flight so that we can have something like that make sure you stretch all the way up until the graphics the graphic input um finishes like that then you can click ok right that's basically it i can come and adjust it let's select this edge oh sorry let's get this edge no we need to do it using this reference line i'll click the reference line and offset the edge like that all the way to the wall all right so if we check this on 3d let's say open a 3d this is how it's being located we need to take out this wall and then bring out our thing Let's go back to the ground and select these walls. They are grouped to both this side as well. And then hit Control C to copy. Let's move on to the first floor level and then hit Control V to paste that so that your walls continue all the way. All right. So let's go back to the first floor. We need to trim off this. Control and hold to trim off. Can delete you can delete this one you can trim this and trim also this side delete that one okay so if you go down to the ground floor we can now select our staircase and mirror a copy let's mirror a copy by control shift m and use this line as a mirroring reference all right so if we check on a 3d we have both our staircase placed like that so we need now to put our first floor slab we can use the same one from the ground we can select it just here and then Control shift d let's move it to this to the reference here and to be sure you're going to come here and under the info box make sure the home story is first and then uh, should be zero should be sitting at zero all right now you have your slab in place but now our staircase is hidden we need to open up the void for our staircase to do that let's go to the first floor and uh, select your slab Let's pick one of the points and introduce subtract from polygon. Like I said, subtract from polygon and then I'm going to use this edge or this corner to draw a rectangle that will subtract that for the staircase. Let's do the same to the side. Pick this point add subtract with polygon. I'm going to pick this corner and then boom. Oh, there's some 
materials that are left here okay let's select our slab to fix this kind of situation we have to zoom zoom in and then click one of the edge let's click one of the edge and you can offset that edge along like that all right <clears throat> okay so if you check on a 3d that's basically how it is i think there's there's a little bit a problem with our with our staircase i thought it would be sitting on top of this wall but uh, it looks like the height also it's not the same height so we need to open a section in order for us to fix this so let's go down to the, the viewpoints and there's a section two there let's draw a section across our building like that okay and then select the section line marker open its settings what we need to do is to do the same as we did for the elevation set the marker size to 10 millimeters and then move down here under marker symbol and text change the um, style to circle three and hit ok all right so we can right click on this to open it if you want or we can find it under the, the section um, window and then open that section all right I think we needed um, to cut the other flight because it's missing. What I'll do, I'll go back here and let's click one of the points and mirror our section view. We'll mirror it horizontal like that. So if you go back to your section, it will give us uh, it give us uh, this. But what we want here is to move this point down here to zero so that it can sit right on top of on the edge of the right on the edge of the first floor level all right okay and then this area or this issue here we can go back to the first floor and fill up with a slab i'll pick this point and then introduce add polygon i'll draw a polygon just for this space do the same for this side as well add a polygon draw to the edge of the staircase boom now you have this and you can, you can, you can always come here and adjust so in this case we need to stretch offset this edge to there let's confirm this side as well this side is perfect all right I'm pretty happy with the staircase now we need to move on into the um, roof geometry but before we do roof geometry we haven't um, uh, placed the footings for these um, walls that we've introduced so i'll go to the footing or before you go to footing let's go to the ground and copy let's just copy this too right click and copy let's paste it under the footing just paste it there right i can pick parameter of this now let's use this one because uh, i want the one for the one with um with the profile okay so let's just quickly draw it i think we need to start from the here going all the way like that okay let's also suspend group and fix this connection here all right then i can right click move and drag or mirror copy or control shift m by using the center point center line all right so if you check on 3d boom you have your materials there but they has to be consistent i'll pick parameters of this and then inject it to by control alt hold let's inject it to these ones to be consistent let's do this uh, this side as well do the same to the side like that okay i'm pretty happy with the results so far it's now our building is starting to take shape so we need to move on to the uh, roof design so let's open the roof um, window 
and we are going to trace off instead of a ground this time around it's going to be the let's change the reference to the below ground the below current story which is first floor okay so the the style of the roof that i want to do let me just do a sketch on an elevation this elevation let's select this elevation right click to open with current view settings the design that i want to uh, do here is um let's say pick a polyline i want this kind of roof let's say that and then i will say make a copy to the other side so this type of a roof that i'm looking at but it has to have a, a gutter here it has to have a gutter here something like that okay all right so to achieve this let me just delete this sketch because i don't need them let's go back to the roof plan what i want to do is um, activate the roof tool and once you activate the roof tool make sure the geometry method is the multiply no sorry it's the single plane i can use multiplane as well let's just use multiplane and i'll show you why but change the no let's go for single plane i don't know why i'm contemplating between the two so change the structure to just the basic and then make sure it's timber let's scroll down and uh, set the the pitch to 35 supposed to be sitting on zero i would want this to be uh, 250 or 250 let's make the thickness of the roof 250 All right and then from here once you are done with the settings let's draw the side the side of the sloping of our roof i'll start with this area I don't know why it's... let me pick let me pick this point and then draw it all the way like that and then this eye indicates this eye cursor indicates the direction of the sloping so i'll choose this side and then once you're done you have to draw it now let's place our roof like that but it has to be on the center like that okay so we need now to mirror copy control shift m to mirror copy of this to there to fill up that oh we should continue all the way to here let's just stretch this edge if you check on 3d that's basically what i want all right but before i place the other um the other roof this side i would need to construct the gutter first and this gutter has to sit right on the three meters high um, line. So let me just show you how it's going to be act. Let me just control shift M to mirror this to the other side. I'll show why I, sh I should have constructed the gutter first. So the gutter will be here. And to do the gutter, let's go down to the plan and activate the slab tool. What I want is to draw a slab here just draw a slab like that and then this slab is uh, 250 we need to increase it by 50 this side and stretch again this side by 50 so to make the gutter i think it's still it's me that means it's around uh, 300 it has to be more than this let me let me introduce this let's see how wide is it 400 i think 400 is much better and then once you're done with this um you know what i need to add because the 230 wall has to sit on top of this edge so i would say add a 230 this side and then add another 230 this side all right so that i can now place a concrete wall change the material to be concrete structural and then you can now use this to place your wall you can um, use the magic wall placement 
which is by clicking and hold your spacebar so make sure they because it will pick i can i can tell it's picking the ground as you can see it's picking the ground floor so we need to set this to be a roof if you do this it's supposed to be a roof no okay not not uh let me open the settings and then under geometry and positioning i don't know why it's not giving me this option of defining the home store <coughs> i think it, it wants us to place it first and then that's when you can do let's just do it i'll pick this uh, the edge of the slab and then uh, it asked me to crop this i don't want to crop i want to crop this yes I'll say cancel and then here is the the walls so what i need to do is click this walls suspend group to select all and then do that i need to turn the reference location to the inside like that and then uh, open the settings uh, let's change let's override the surface all right and then from here what i want Yeah, I think it's perfect. What I want is to use this as a let's let's select them all. Right click on it, come to connect and bring solid element operation. Uh, by default, Arcade will pick the selection as a target. So we need to select the operator, which is this two roof. And then add, let's use the subtraction with upward extrusion and then hit execute. So that will be the um i think we also need to have something to cut off or to trim off this area here well, instead of doing that we can say uh, let's suspend this group and then pick or we'll come here under the height let's set this to be maybe let me measure first and see how high it can be let's make it 400 mm. 400 and then this can move up by by 400 let's click this one yeah okay so that's how it's going to uh, be assembled so I need to make sure the material of the concrete matches the matches the material of the wall so let's just select that slab and open the settings we're gonna only op override the edge by stucco white rough hit ok there we go it looks pretty awesome great that's what i want okay so from here now i can treat off the other edges which is this wall we need to select all of them okay you know the best way is to go come here under the first floor and then pick all the walls and uh no, i think it's not possible I will have to do it uh, the way I was doing. Select all the edges, all the walls from edge, this one, and then stretch it to the height of the roof. Right click to bring connection and um, solid element operation. By default, it will pick these six walls. Let's pick our operator and then subtract with upward extrusion and hit execute so that will be that we have a situation to deal with i think for these two walls here i'll target them and then i would use the slab as an operator execute and then for the issue of this the edges i would go down to the roof plan let's close off the solid element operation um, window and then i'll select the roof and offset it by maybe 100 for both sides 100 like that automatically it will clean up the edge like that 
all right so we need now to stretch the height of this wall that has to go all the way somewhere yeah let's make it 12.5 oh, 5.5 is huge not link let's unlink them and say 5.1 5 meters let's leave it at 4.8 okay I'm going to do the same to the side not unlinked not linked and then make it 4.8 all right that's basically how I want it so the building has taken a lot of shape as you can see so we need to now start putting a lot of details i'm excited to take this now into the next level we're gonna start by adding um the openings let's start adding openings so that you can define the planes and uh or before you do the openings let's just treat the ground um site as well so i'm gonna go to the ground and uh let's say we want to start by the apron around the edge here okay so to draw an apron i would use a slab this slab also has to address the situation we already or this modification so i'll pick one of the edge there and then introduce add polygon i'll add a polygon to here do the same to the side let's pick this edge add a polygon I'll add a polygon here oh why this side is not happening let's do it again add a polygon let's add a polygon there make sure it's correctly done i think there's some issues here offset this edge to there no i think it's fine it was fine okay so i'll take advantage of this slab and use it to do an apron apron is going to be the pavement around the building so to do that let's click one of the points of the slab and then offset all edges and i'm going to hit control to add a copy i just want to offset the copy and then this copy i'm going to move it outside by 1.5 all right so once we have your your outside apron i will select it and then pick one of the points let's subtract it by using the internal slab you can see we have a difficulties to pick our uh, slab by using this magic wand to 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 solve this what we need to do is uh, before we select um, this let's escape we need to select both um, slabs so in archicad if if you are having multiple items sitting on top of each other the selection is going to be difficult for you to just select element by just clicking on it so you have to introduce the smart way of doing it by hitting tab tab tap it will now if you continue hitting like that it will select or highlight the element by name and then you can select it for this case i'm gonna select that so now i can select both of them and then if i pick the point of the outside slab and do the same to subtract i can easily now um sh uh, space hold to activate the mic uh the the magic wand tool and select that slab so now i've i've cut the whole for this slab i've subtracted that um uh, geometry from the internal slab so what i need to do is to select the inner edge and offset the edge to the or outside by i would say 280 like that okay and then we have issues by the entrance here we need to trim off this i'll select one of the points like I did and then subtract I would use this slab to to trim off so you could see it gives us a problem to use the magic one tool to do that we can deploy a different strategy use this and select then we just draw a rectangle like that perfect so I think this edge also needs to go inside just to clean up your elements like that and i'm going to have a modification as well for here what i'll do i'll pick this wall and then draw that let's turn the reference to the inside 
then I'm going to have uh, something like that. It will be, it will act as it will act as a duct for the kitchen area. So let me see the, the width of the duct. I think it's large. Let's move it outside. I think it's fine here. I can move it outside by one and five. All right, and then let's fillet or intersect those lines. All right. Let's check on 3D. Yeah, that will be just on the ground floor only. So again, we should have some planters here as well. So that is the apron. Let's change this material to be to reflect our type paving. I'll go for these bricks. Hit OK. Something like this. All right. Let's go for the planters as well. We're having I'll pick this wall, control shift D to drag a copy. I'm gonna draw all the way to here, pick the parameters of it, and draw to add a planter. So let's check on the 3D, set these planter walls to be not linked and set it to be 500 high. I think. Let's make it 600. Okay. And then we need to fill up with soil. Let's fill up our planter with soil. What I'll do is uh, pick the mesh tool. And then I'm going to draw here to fill. Okay. But I think I feel like it's too tight. Too thick. is small. Let's make it 300. 300 wide. Together with our, our duct. So move down by 70. Then I can stretch to clean up this. I'll intersect this one. Also, I'll intersect that one. Same place to this one as well. Okay, if so we check on 3D, it will be something like this. Okay, our soil is leaking behind. Let's move it to here and then change the size to. 600 high okay let's change its stop surface to maybe foliage something like that i don't think let's change it to i'll say that's brown or just soil f brown all right so we need to take this to the other side as well let's go back to the ground floor i'm going to let's select that, that and hit ctrl g to group this and ctrl shift m to mirror a copy to the other side this side we don't have the the planter i mean the, the duct we're just going to stretch this line to there and our soil okay so we have also the parkings and um this stepping stone so the stepping stone i'm going to use the slab i'll pick the slab and then i'm just going to hold space bar and place hold space bar and just use this magic wand to place on the right so if we check on 3d that's basically how it is but these ones, I will try by all means I group them. Let me select all of them and uh, hit Ctrl G to group. And we need to step down, to step them, to step them down a bit, maybe by 50. I'm oh, sorry. Let's step down by 50. All right. And uh, the material has to change. Let's delete this one. Um, suspend groups let's open its settings we want to override the surface of it let's find concrete we'll find this concrete hit ok make sure it's for all sides all right that's basically how it's supposed to be okay let's move on to the parking and 
so for the parking i'll start by applying the mesh for the side so let's pick the mesh tool and i'll draw the side the side is going to be 20 Twenty thousand millimeters by forty thousand. Let me just go for thirty. This one I will, I will reduce to ten, ten meters. And then drag this down a bit. Make sure it sits on the center. I'll make sure I centerize with that. Okay. With this I can move it down there. Okay, let's get rid of the the hatch. So I'll select it and open in settings under floor plan and section. Let's get rid of the fill so that we remain with just a plain um, drawing. So if we check on 3D, that's how it is. I think it's sitting on the right place. All right, let's go back there. Let's now do the pavement for the parking. I'll use the same um, apron pavement. Uh, settings and then let's just draw it there but although it should, it should go all the way to the roadside I don't know where it is but I will determine it later okay let's check on 3d I think this is has to go right on the edge of the on the edge of the mesh and Let's change the material to concrete. Let's use concrete as well for this one. And what I will do, I'll right click and bring the solid element operation. This will be the operator. The target will be the mesh and use uh, subtraction with upward extrusion just to restrict it to the. And then we have this markings, the parking markings. What we need to do is, uh, we're gonna use a slab. Let me just pick this parameter of the slab. And then let's draw this by a rectangle. Let's draw this, um, I want it to be 80 by five meters long. Select that, move it by midpoint to the line. Okay, if we check on 3D, should have something like that check select it set the surface to paint white let's go for paint white for all surfaces and then hit okay so i'm going to go down to the ground and uh, let's draw this side i will control shift e to rotate a copy like so and then move it to the edge of this this side i'm going to offset this edge offset the edge to there so let's select these two and group once you've grouped them Control shift d and carry this copy to here let's make sure suspend groups are active so that we can stretch this edge to there all right so we can now select all of this by suspending the group Control shift m and mirror a copy to the other side check on 3d you have something like that let's select this slab and then right click to connect and bring solid element operation so let's select our operators which is our markings add as an operator use subtract with about extrusion and then execute so you have now your your parking markings you can try as much as you can to be clean but i don't think for this type uh, it's, let's say maybe instead of having this line you can make it that way same applies to this i'll do the rest like I said, it's important to model well in order for you to extract. You could imagine if you were to do the side plan for this. So you have to model the way it's supposed to. Now we, let's do the access road. So what I'll do, I'll pick a slab, I don't know, a mesh tool. 
let's draw a rectangle like that and this road is going to be uh, 100 meters long by 9 meters wide all right and then i'll move it to the edge of the boundary of the plot and then move it back offset it back by maybe 1.5 all right so because this project is a duplex we're going to have two um entrance or two access to this plots because we have uh, our plot is being divided into into two let me just draw that so that you can see oh sorry it's been divided like that we have two plots literally it's two plots because these are two buildings so we need to have access here and an access there so to do that i would use this slab and then i would add uh, a polygon to the slab from here or before i i add let me just draw a guidelines or a sketch i'll start it from this edge move this line to here and then we'd have access of maybe three meters this side and then we're gonna also have the same a control shift m to mirror to the other side i think three meters is small we can make it uh, let's make it four meters i'll drag this line by a meter same applies to this side drag this by a meter okay so now we have two access points for this plot so what i need to do is to take this um, slab and then add a polygon I'm going to add a polygon here and then I'll add another polygon uh, there. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. I could have used the road instead of the slab. Let's use the road. Let's add a polygon here. Place it there. Add another polygon here. Yes, so that in 3D you have something like this. I'm going to change this to be a, an asphalt. Um, I go for the asphalt light. Hit OK. So this has to be. Uh, yeah. Okay. And um, what I want to add a detail to this uh, mesh is to say, let's draw a line that is at the midpoint of this uh, road because i want to i want to introduce the let me just i want to introduce the slopiness the drainage of the road it's going to drain to this edge so what i'll do i would select that make sure the mesh tool is active on the tool palette and then you can click and hold the space bar to activate the magic one then let's do what let's click on this line and then i'm going to fit to all um, ridges and then hit OK. So I don't know why we have this funny points. We need to eliminate these points like that. So if we check on 3D, we have a line now in our mesh, in our road. So I can now pick this edge and move it down a little bit by maybe by 250 do the same to that side okay if you look pretty all our road is sloping to the other side and we can also define this one move this one a bit by 120 do the same to that side okay it's not gonna work let's undo let's leave it the way it is now all right so i'm going to round these edges you cannot have a turning ready at 90 degrees so you need to round these corners so to do them we can also do them in 3d here i'll pick this corner and uh, find fillet or chamfer 1.5 is fine let's go for this also do the same 1.5 do the same to this one 1.5 do the same to that one and round okay looks pretty much impressive 
at the moment i think i need to differentiate the stones stepping stones to the pavement let's find um something different okay yeah i think it's that now we have everything in terms of the geometry for our our project but uh if we see if we look at closely to this area we need to treat or clean up the edges as you can see so i'll go to the roof plan and pick parameter of this wall then let's draw the wall from uh, we can draw the wall because it's not i cannot see the edges of the wall to achieve that maybe i could uh, select the roof maybe i could say go back to the first floor i would draw a reference line that's where the grid lines are important if i had a grid i would uh, reference this with that so in this case i'll just draw a line like that just to reference the inside of the wall and then go back to your slab and uh let's oh let's copy this uh lines copy these lines to your to your roof paste them here now we know the inner edge of the wall so we can quickly pick this um, parameter and draw the wall it has to go outside like that right click and then hit ok if we check on 3d something like this but it has to start from the roof and i'll stretch the height manually by this stretch height in the pet palette okay so that's basically what you see let's mirror this wall to the other side i don't i'm not sure it's the one but i believe so let's control shift m and use this midpoint mirror it to the other side let's check on 3d should be fine what we need to do is uh, select or oh, suspend groups because i just want to select one all and then fillet do the same to the other side fillet all right to make your connections accurate now we need to um because it's a um, it's more like a tunnel we need to cap it up we need to put a roof to this two um features let's go back to the roof plan and we need i'm gonna use a slab so let's pick a slab and fill up this area let's select it um assign it make it uh 600 control shift m to mirror it to the other side to mirror and copy to the other side let's select both of them control g to group them open the 3d window let's select them make sure the suspend group is unactive so that you can select all of the slabs i want to define the height of it maybe let's make it 1.2 right 1.2 is perfect 1.2 is fine yes i think it's sitting on the right um edge okay so let's move on to the openings of this in order for me to achieve openings i'll start with the doors so we're having two doors for the exit for the entrance here by this so let's go down to the ground and i'm going to use um, a i'm going to use an a pack of doors that um, i've created um you can check the link on the description if you want to uh, get those doors so what i'll do i'll go to the options and under no i need to go to window under palettes let's bring in the favorites so here i would go for settings and import and export let's import the favorites so i have uh door favorites let's load that and then it says this uh, it's not compatible and cannot be imported okay if that's the case uh, i need to choose for the right version okay if that's the case let's close this and then uh, i have them here open what i'll do i'll move around and choose what style that i want to use for my 
entry doors. I think these ones are fine. Let's go down to the plane view. I'll select this um, uh, material and then hit Control C to copy. Let's go back to our file and place it here. Control V and paste. I'll just use the center of the screen and make sure I move it to the side of the project and then click outside. I'm going to delete this um, detail here. All right. So what I'll do, I'll write, I'll select, let me select all of it and go to file, libraries and objects, save selection as a door leaf. And I would say door leaf one is fine. Just hit save and then hit OK. So once you are done with placement of, I mean, saving of that, let's um, get rid of the trace so that you can see our item clearly. Another thing that I would do is um, let's, because if you want to appreciate our, our progress, well, I'm going to take the sketch and move it outside. Let's move the sketch outside our drawing so that we can remain with our project like this. You can, by so doing, you can appreciate the project um, drawings clearly because I could see there is some issues here as well that needs to be fixed. I will just stretch this to the way and then fill up this by like so. This has to be subtracted. Yeah, this type of things. This is going, we're not having an apron on the side. Okay, perfect. Let's go back to our doors. We are, I'm going to activate the door tool from the tool palette and open its settings. Under its settings, what I need to do is uh, choose the, the handle type. And then under leaf type, we're going to use a custom leaf. Just scroll down here, you find a custom leaf, or you click on this uh, tab to give you the the window for the leaves. I'll click the custom leaf. By default, it's only one leaf that is being created, which is custom, which is our recently created door leaf. I'll hit OK. It's loaded, and then once I'm, I'm done with the door leaf, let's move on to the model attributes and set the resolution to 100 and the 3d detail level to full resolution and i think we also need to do the floor plan and uh, section display and set this to scale sensitive or can make it just 150 and then uh, the show reveal should be always and i don't want to use the fields i'll take care of the fields and hit ok so if you place your door like that so you choose the side of the opening you'd have a door but that is not the door that i'm looking for i'm going to open settings what i'm looking for is the pivot door so under the rotating doors there is this pivot door what i'll do i'll select the the leaf and go down here choose custom go back and select um the door settings i want to select the handle as well let's assign it this handle I'll go back to this list of the parameters and let's find the model attributes and do the rest. Do the same as we did previously. I'll set the 3D detail level to full, the camera resolution to 100 and go back to the list of the parameters as well. Let's find floor plan and section. This we're going to set the detail, 2D detail level to 1 is to 50 uh, scale and then the reveal is going to be always. So like I said, I don't want to see the what you call the use fields then hit ok let's place our our door here all right so if you want to achieve this little build style in your door you can select it and then pick this hot spot and rotate it a bit like that i want to add a detail the path has to be dotted instead of solid like that so let's say select oh sorry select the door and open the settings what i'm going to do is open the parameters and find the opening lines so the opening lines are both 2d and 3d so in 2d 
which is the floor plans I'll override and then use the dashed lines same applies to this one I'll use dashed lines for both sides okay then uh, I think override dotted curved is fine and hit ok so that will be the um, door so I'm going to select it and mirror copy to the other side by control shift M and then use this line to mirror all right so I think what I can do let's see this has to be on the, on the edge like that do the same to the side as well move it to the edge like that okay we have another wall another doors that side let's just pick the same or let's appreciate in 3d first okay the reason why it doesn't sh show this box check marks is because the material that we've used for for our for this let's just see let me just show you right click and then say show all in 3d i'm looking for that profile let me select this profile move it outside where is it show all in 3d okay let me do this i'll select this profile and um, open its settings let's override let's override uh, okay this will be metal that is fine let's find uh, metal aluminium and then this will be this will be timber I would say wood wood oak light All right okay so I can now select this and go back to the libraries and objects and save selection as a door leaf i'm going to replace this one so that it can update my doors then hit ok if we check your doors should be fine now even though the we are left with one part let's go back i can isolate this by hitting f5 let's isolate it in 3d so that you can um, analyze it and try to fix we we'll select this to open settings change this to wood wood oak I could have used Miranti or mahogany let's go for mahogany even for this one I'm going to go for mahogany mahogany horizontal all right so we could now select that file libraries and object save selection as a door leaf and i'm going to yes because i'm doing it on 3d to give me this window to say which plane you want to use i want to use the horizontal plane i'll say continue then let's save this and replace it hit okay if you show all in 3d would find now the doors are fine okay so i can match the door frame to the color to the finish of the door plane so let's open the parameters and um let's find model attributes okay let's make the uniform the frame to be mahogany i've used mahogany same applies to the inside mahogany hit okay what is this problem let's make uniform surfaces what is the problem because i've this is a door frame let me open this by 13 this is the door frame i don't know why the door frame is acting like this okay let me find uh, and it's a little bit of troubleshooting here okay i think i'm gonna 
take off this, take off that. Hmm. There is a problem here. Let's undo, undo. Okay, let's just leave it the way it is for now. Let's see what to do. I can go ahead and delete this um, sketch. Okay, so we have also this type of design of doors from the back. So I'll pick parameters of fit. Let's place it here. Place it. We can adjust this wall to accommodate that. Trim off that one. And delete this. Control Shift M to mirror your door to the other side and control shift again to mirror your wall to the other side you can now move your wall to there and then fix this issue of the slip because of the modification we just made even this one just to go here and then we trim off this okay it looks great already we have also the folding and sliding door here let's do that open open settings um, i'm gonna go for sliding folding i'm going to go with this one multi-panel and uh, let's set the angle to this and then click on the tab for the door leaf this one it's important to understand that the hv grid is the only um leaf that you can um define the the dimensions of the width the other ones doesn't give you the options as you can see it's grayed out so if you want to use these ones that doesn't support that you have to set first the dimension for the grid and then you can change let's for example say this is going to be 80 the sides is going to be 80 as well 80 and then if i change it to this you see it gets the 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 dimensions of the edge grid except the left and the I don't know why this one but uh, what I want here is to um, let's go back to here I want the door settings no. I'm looking for I don't know what happened okay I'm looking for this one also um, the width of this has to be half of the half the frame of the wall as you can see that's what i wanted to set and the edge of it should be 40 by 40. okay but uh if this is 40 let, let me make my let me make this uh 40 as well 40 40. and then if i open other material other parameters let's find model attributes i want to make this frame to be uniform the surface to be uniform and then let's go for paint ivory paint ivory black and then hit ok let's place our it's going to stack from the inside like so okay you could see it's just it doesn't have details um, let me just it doesn't have details on it we need to go back and let's the camera resolution should be 100 and this has to be full let's find again the parameters for the floor plan and section make sure the 2d detail level is 1 is to 50 this one should be always and um, i don't want to use the fill uh, what's left again i think it okay all right now we have a little bit of details here i can pick this point and stack them there all right let's take them here if you look at uh, this we have this staking rail um, track we need to place that also on our on our door so let's move on to these parameters what I want is uh, the fixing and fixtures and then activate the rail if you hit ok it will give you the rail on the floor plan so we can now delete this wall and uh, let's try select this wall 
control shift m mira i copy to the other side all right let's just make sure it doesn't mess up the surface of this one okay if we check on 3d this side this is what we have we didn't want to show the the grids i don't know why they came what we need to do is select this and open settings let's go back to the frame and leaf no i think it's the settings let's change this to this one and then hit ok all right pretty impressive i think i'm very impressed with the results so far we need to fix the issue of the foundation because we made the modification for this wall so the footing left behind i'll do the foundation and then right click to show this as a trace reference and uh, let's activate suspend group this has to move all the way to there and fillet with this one fillet with that one what did i do okay the wall left as well i need to take the wall move it here am i doing the right thing i don't think i'm doing the right thing i can align it also on 3d and then fillet it with this one right so we need to repeat it this side as well let's take this wall, move it to the edge oh, and fillet this two right but i know the footing left behind this one so what i can do i can delete this one and here i copy Control shift m to this side let's fillet this two also fillet these ones all right okay so we're pretty now happy that um the everything sits the way we want so we have this issue here we can stretch that then this can be stretched somewhere here do the same to here and align it with the floor slab all right i don't know why it's at the top we need to drop our pet uh there's a bit i think we need to align them let's just drop them like that i hope it doesn't affect the front yeah it looks great okay so we do have some balconies for this project so we need to start indicating that in order for us to define this project further so to do the balconies i'll go to the ground i'm going to pick uh, okay let's go to the first floor because they are located on the first floor and pick the slab for the first floor parameter and draw the balcony just place the balcony like that just put it here so that I can come and modify it by that. This side has to be here. And to control shift M to mirror copy to the other side. Same thing. If you check on 3D, that's what it is. Alright. But we do have this little issue for both sides. What we need to do is let's delete this one and sort it only for this one and then mirror a sorted copy so right click or pick the point sorry and let's subtract this i'll do the same to this area subtract this portion now i can mirror a copy to the other side check on 3d boom we have that issue sorted okay so let's move on and place the openings we do have a window kitchen here it's going to be more like a splayed window narrow but um white it's going to be narrow but white with height so let's go back to the ground floor and activate the window tool open its settings but for the windows i have uh, um, something that i can use under basic windows let's find i think you can use this one let's see 
we can modify this one let's go back here yeah uh, no i don't think you can achieve that with this what i'm looking for is uh this double window yes i'm looking for this double window and then both the search are going to be top hem let's set them to be top hem and then top hem i'm going to make the two the detail level to full for both um 2d and 3d this will be scale 1 to 50 and then let's go under the list of parameters and open model attributes we want to set the frame to be uniform and change the surface to paint ivory i think we're good to go let's move here and place our window to place the window make sure the the, the thick part indicates the, the position of the window on the thickness of the wall and then if once you've decided which for this case i want them to be inside placed from the inside of the wall like that and then i can indicate the opening side by which is going to be the outside all right so if we check this on 3d this is how it will be like let's select it we want this to be 1.8 which is the width and this to be 900 now it's going to be 600 because it's a split window it's going to remain with the height of uh one meter because of the countertop of the kitchen so it's going to be like that and uh, let's select this and pick parameters and place it also this side uh, okay so to be accurate with the position i'll move it to this point here then drag it back by maybe 500 something like that I'll do the same to the side, drag it here, move it back by 500. Oh, I move it back by 300. Right. Okay. So that's basically for the ground um, front wall. So we let's move on to the top part of the thing. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go to the first floor. And here, if you look at uh, our our sketch, we have a window here and then the door there. So I'm going to do a little bit of design here, and for in order for me to achieve this. So I do have. Uh, let me open a file that I'm going to use. Uh, oh, but if, you know what? Let me just use this default. I'm going to use just the default uh, library. So switch off the trace and open the door open its settings i'm looking for the hinge doors yes then scroll down there i'm going to go for this one with the side light and uh, let's choose the grid set the handle to this and click on the grid side let's move okay we can this one we can set it let's say 80 we also want the upper to be 80 same applies to the side right and then i move down to the list of the parameters let's open the model attributes where is it model attributes all right set the frame to be uniform and key in the paint ivory so go back to, again to the list of parameters let's this time around go for floor plan and section where is it okay let me move this here oh sorry floor plan and section get rid of the fill set the 2d detail level to 1 is to 50 this is going to be always okay so there is uh, an opening lines as well opening lines of a door i'm going to override the 2d to be a test same applies to this one. It's going to be dashed for both sides. All right. And then we have open line for the sideline. Sideline is not openable, so I'll just leave it the way it is and come here. Let's place our our wall. So I'm going to move this right on the edge of the closet. Okay. And then if we check on 3D, that's basically what we have. And I need to increase this transom by 2.5. Okay. 
okay and then let's do the windows go down to the first floor plan i'm going to find the window tool open its settings i'm going to go with the, this window and uh, let's go straight into the parameters model attributes and set this to paint ivory make sure the detail level is full and let's go back down to floor plan and section get rid of the of the feel and set the scale to 1 is to 50 this is going to be always and hit ok to place your window here and then i'll move it right on the edge of this door okay if we check on 3d let's drag this down and stretch the height as well something like this i'm not impressed with the design i can increase decrease the size of this to maybe a meter so that maybe let's pick this point and move drag horizontally to here let's see i think let's make sure the height is the same okay for the door i need to take out or remove the casing so open its settings and under let's find casing outside and inside and then we're gonna get rid of this both for inside as well so that we remain with purely the door frame and we can stretch the height something like this we could have used pockets i think i need to increase the size of the pane for the door let's open its settings and go back to the door settings and opening yes here let's make it a meter wow i didn't do that justice and it was 600 so that means we need to increase the width of the door to two meters in order for this to oh yeah, in order for the pain to, inc to increase i think it looks huge let's make it uh, 1.8 yeah then we can go to the ground and align this to the wardrobe side even the window let's align it to the right if we check on 3d are they joining up nice yes they are okay i think that pretty much i'm i'm happy with the design of this but i i would want to have the the line for for this transom to be in line with the line of the door so i don't know what to achieve this is let's find a way let's find uh, how can we achieve that let's go back here yes i think no but here we're not gonna change it okay so instead of four let's make it three yes i think this way is fine this way is fine and i can come here and make one of this openable if i want but let me set this to 80 80 or maybe 50 like the other ones something like that okay now i'm pretty impressed with the results of the door we need to i think you can increase this to the height of the beam the door yes to the height of the beam and for this i can introduce the fourth um, pane i can now introduce this to be four right 
almost 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 all right okay so i'm, I'm gonna mirror this to the other side of the the building so let's pick this and that control shift m and mirror it to this side okay so whatever happens this side should happen to the other side as well let's delete uh this wall and control shift m to mirror this to the other side okay i don't know why this slab is not going all the way to there so if you check on 3d this is basically what we have okay it looks impressive already this we need to trim it because uh, uh we've changed this i'll right click on it and connect to bring solid element operation and select this as operators let's change the subtraction with upward extrusion and hit execute for this issue i'll select the slab for the concrete cut as an operator and trim it off we can get rid of the window for the solid element operation all right it's starting to take in shape um one thing that i didn't uh, cater for is this there should be a window inside the edge here so with the design that i had before in my mind it was that when the wall comes here it will go inside let me just turn off that it will go inside by 300 and then go like that that's what i had in my mind initially and then I can uh, trim off that and trim off this to remain with something like that. All right, something like that. So I'm gonna do the same to the other side. Let's take these walls, Control Shift M to mirror a copy to the other side and trim off this wall. Okay. That's the modification that I wanted to do, and then I can select all the walls. Let's select all these walls, right click, connect to bring in solid element operation. The operator will be both the roof and the concrete slab cut. Change the operation to subtraction with upward extrusion and hit execute. You can get rid of the window that's how it is what i wanted is to play around with with some finishes some planes so for this here i'm going to use a let me use just where is the outside i believe the outside is this one but i just let me just change everything this will be a brick i want a nice brick uh, finish Stack point. Yeah, this. Okay, it looks great. I'm impressed. Okay, and then so this one again, I have a pocket window there that will go with the profile of the roof to the to the top. Let's go down to the first floor and activate the window two. Where is the window? Oh, window two. I'm going to change the folder for Windows to be um, there's this special Windows. And then I'm going to go with this trapeze at window. Let's quickly set up the the details. It has to be 1 is to 50. And come here under model attributes. Set the uniform frame. Change it to ivory. Okay. And let's find the floor plan parameters and get rid of the get rid of the fields hit ok let's place the window if you have to come here stretch it to filling the the wall arm um, with so if you check on 3d so it will be like that so i'm definitely going to use two windows here if for me to achieve this um let's I think it's best I use elevation to um, set up that or to position the window. 
So I'll come here and then right click on this elevation, open with current view settings. And then what I'll do, select the window, move it to the top. And I don't think it's aligned it properly. So what I'll do, I'll select. But before you align it, before you stretch it, let's move this to here. Move this point to there. And then I can pick this point and stretch this to pretty simple. Okay. Let's get rid of the opening lines. They look horrible. So to do that, let's go under the frame settings, make this fixed search and hit OK. Perfect. So like I said, I need an extra window down to cater for this. I can pick the same window for this and make a copy to the side and I can stretch it uh, like start make it full height straight from the floor I can also trim it to the yeah if you check on 3d that's basically what we have let's reduce the number oh this one it's inside okay I'll pick this and then delete this one I don't know what you realize what happened because we were copying this window to here but it's not in the same wall so we need to um, take the parameters of this delete this wall and then we can place a new window on this wall but make sure they are aligned this one was placed from the outside so I need to place it uh, in the inside like that right let's go back to the elevation and align this if you check on 3d it should be okay now right so i'm going to reduce the number of leaves of paints to two maybe to have something like that okay looks great so what I'm going to do is to copy this wall to the other side. Let's get rid of this wall. Go back to the first floor and select your wall. Try to find yes. Go to Control Shift M to mirror and copy to the side. Okay, if we check on 3D, that's what you have. Let's select that. Connect to bring solid element operation. And use the roof as an operator. Choose subtract with upward extrusion and then boom. Okay. Oh, well, we still have an issue here to fix, which is this. I'll click, pick the wall and use the stretch the length and reference it with this corner here to clean up. All right. That looks super. So what, what's in here has to go all the way to the other side as well. So I need to get rid of these walls again <laughs> and then go back to the first floor and select all your walls that are on the side it's going to be a challenge to select this wall all right control shift m to mirror copy to the other side by this point and then make sure it's pretty much check on 3d i'm gonna select all as a target get as a target both roofs will be operator and the gutter slab I subtract with upward exclusion to trim off the top part of your walls okay that's basically what you have right so now let's try add more details but what you see here is that um, we're gonna have a wrap from the ground going all the way to there and same applies to here so to achieve that we would have a wall that is coming from all the way to the ground going all the way for this side it will be to finish here by the the balcony so let's go to the ground and 
I'll pick the parameters of this wall and draw the wall to this edge. Right click, hit OK. Go back to the 3D. This wall, it has to go all the way to the underside of the roof. It has to connect with this roof. Right. I don't know why it's not. I think we need to adjust also the, the roof to this edge of the wall. It has to be equal. It has to be the same as well. I think I'm going to change also the the projection of the gutter. Let's get rid of this. And then this I'm going to set it to be the edge of it, which is the side to be black. Let me say paint gray, dark gray. Hit OK. This wall is going to be the same as well. And paint dark gray. All right. Hit OK. All right. Yeah. Now to fix the connection between these walls and the roofs, as you can see here, and the top of the edge is not connecting. On. To fix that, let's select the roof and open its settings under here let's make it to be vertical or plum in the roof terminology so once it's plum you could adjust now this to the edge of the wall but this will give us this issue you've seen before so to solve this issue you can offset it by maybe 0.1 let's see it's gone which is great and uh, we need to trim off the roof, I mean the wall, to merge the profile of our roof. So the wall is going to be the target, the operator is going to be the roof, and subtract with upward because we just want to trim off the up the encroaching material of the wall so that we become something like that. Perfect, it looks wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, we need to mirror this to the other side as well. We're gonna have one, two, and three this side. So what I'll do, Control Shift M, make a copy to here. Let's see, is it aligned with the roof? It's aligned. I think also we need to change the, let's define the protrusion of the concrete gutter. So this, I'm going to go to the roof and it's going to end right on the edge of, let's select the slab and offset this edge right on the side of that wall. And this is going to go all the way to there. If we check on 3D, that's basically what we want. I'm going to trim off this guy and this one. Something like that. And then this wall, I'm going to use it as an operator to trim off this wall. And boom, like that. And it has to be the same material. It has to be the same material. Let's make this um, same material. Why this are not filleting? Wow. There's an issue here. There's an issue here. Should have a wall here. Okay. I think I didn't trim this nicely. I'll trim it on the roof. So, where is it? It's impossible to see them. Okay, let me adjust them here. Pick this point and use the just align them there. It won't hurt. Just like that. All right. All right. We still use this one as an operator to trim off this. Okay. So that I want to see the surface. Okay, and then this wall is going to be trimmed as well. Same to this one. Okay, so now um, we need to have. Okay, let's fix this connection first. Yes. All right. 
so i need to have this copy the side and then have another one there let's go back here i'll control shift and mirror a copy of this wall there control d control shift d to take a copy to the side so that we have uh, something like this we can use this as an operator that's target execute <coughs> what happened i didn't do it properly i didn't do it properly so this will be the target and this is the operator something weird here what's going on here this is the operator target yes i think yeah i think it's fine all right so what i need to do also is to i think this one should be let's align this i know it will create oh it didn't wow i thought it would create again that issue we anticipated when we're dealing with the side as well so this will be the operator the wall will be the target and i'm gonna subtract with upward extrusion perfect so as you could see now we have clean edges of our oh this side is not continue all the way it has to stop let's offset stretch the height of this to the balcony all right that's how it's supposed to be and the balcony has to be on the edge here and uh, I need to fix also issue of this side let's leave it this way because um, I need I might stretch this the walls let's select all the walls stretch them by stretch length to the length of the balcony like that and we can adjust our roof planes by offsetting the edges pick on this edge no way. make sure it's completely done oh my god now they're not cleaning up the way i wanted let's go for i don't know why they're not see this one is cleaned perfectly all right i will align it with this one so that they take the same position okay it looks great it looks great it looks great it looks great all right so um because uh we have different lines that is why it will but i don't think it has to be the case but it's sometimes like it can give you this kind of bug i i said no so we need to make the gutter wall to be the same surface with this so to apply only on the surface i'm going to use the go to documents and bring in the under creative imaging let's find surface paint for this um uh, a feature to work you have to pick parameter of the surface you want to use to apply in a different way so i'll pick this and then pick the surface of my wall and apply it to the surface of of this wall close let's also close that okay so basically you have this for the roof underside i'm going to use uh, a different finish so let's find the underside i want to use the siding siding light something like that okay oh, oops <laughs> All right so as our building is taking um shape so we need to think of also how we treat our services i think what we did already has to be the other side as well so i will select these walls make sure i group them go to the first floor plane select all the walls and control shift to 
mira i copy to the other side all right check on 3d to fix whatever issues they may arise because there will always be issues when you are doing these things you could see there's already issues here let's say we we fix also this issue of the gutter it has to go inside let's trim off these walls go back to the roof plane this uh, wall make sure the zoom group is unactive let's bring this wall right on the top here and our slab so if we check on 3d this two walls needs to be trimmed okay so i'm going to use this wall like i did for the other side as a as an operator so this one is going to be the target subtraction with upward extrusion to trim off that right so i'm going to use documents and open creative imaging to use um surface painter pick this and uh, let's apply it to create a space Let me create a space here let's apply it to this one you can close this all right okay there's a little bit of an issue here this wall needs to go all the way inside instead of i can use yes let me use the surface as a reference and then uh, this walls needs to be trimmed i don't know why they are down like that let me do okay i want to select both these two walls and stretch them all the way to the height of the of the roof now because they are already on a live operation they will trim off itself automatically so what i need to do is to set them to be as the same as uh, I didn't want to make the inside but I'll end up doing that let's just make them one surface to be brick stack point all right that's what we have also we need to trim off these guys so select these three walls or four walls and op bring the solid element operation the target will be the roof i mean the operator will be the roof with subtraction with upward extrusion yeah all right it looks great um it looks great i think also the the edge of the slabs for the it has to be it has to match the the surface of the wall so i'll select both of them and open its settings change only the size to paint dark gray all right so that you can have this continue i'm not sure i should have this that but practically that's how you construct it has to sit on top of the slab okay so i'm basically pretty close to the end of this part we need to add um, the railings and there's um, the beam that i the steel beam that will be keeping all this so let's start with that one so go to the first let's get rid of this and uh, what i'll do here is that let's go for a beam and if you check the profiles that are there for for steel it's only this so i need to import a steel um, profile so i will say go to options and complex profile import standard steel profile so what i want is the c section it depends on the region you are i'm um, the on the southern part of the african continent i'll use south african uh, um, region and then find the c and i'll start it from here let's import from there to 300 add and then i'll say import so now they are imported i can come back here i'd find them there so i'd want the one for 250 and let's place it here i'll draw it to place it here 
right click and then hit ok so if we check on 3d that's how it is i need to offset it a bit inside let's make it here and then my slab is going to i'm going to subtract it so that it doesn't affect that up until here all right so if we check on 3d we will have this kind of detail but i'll drop it let me drop it a bit by maybe 50. that's 50 is significant yeah that's 50 is significant so i can take the slab and stretch it height to match the height of the of the steel profile so i'll do the same to the side as well go back here select the steel beam Control shift m to bring it this side and make sure you do the same to the slab subtract to accommodate our our beam okay perfect i don't think we need this um slab here let's get rid of it i'll select that and subtract this part okay perfect it looks great so also this has to be on the other side is control group all this by control g and come here let's select both the slab and this and group so i'm going to get rid of the slab so that i bring in these two guys let's control shift m and bring in that side make sure it's positioned perfectly you can check yeah it's great all right so um let's move on again and put a lot of details there's a little bit at lighting that is going to wrap around the side the roof and this side as well so let's achieve that i'm gonna go to the roof and uh, roof let's activate the object tool and open its settings let's find sheet it will give us this profile sheet you can change the dimensions or profile to anything that i want but this one i think is fine the first thing that i need to do is to change the angle to 35 to match the roof pitch and then hit ok let's place it here i think by default let's bring it there let me confirm the slope first here it is let's undo i think we need to move it side here and then i can stretch it by the corner like that Control shift m to make a copy let's open this section to align it where is it it's here let's Control d to move it to the top like so if we check on 3d that's what you have pretty easy right so it has to wrap down going down so what i'll do is come here as well um select this one Control shift m i want to paste with the same point and let's open its settings change the uh, slope or the pitch to zero and uh come here oh it has to be 90 degrees sorry instead of zero it has to be 90 degrees and then i'm gonna restrict it to the ground floor or first floor let's drop it to a six zero it's supposed to start all the way here all right negative 80 and then i'm gonna stretch it to the top like that okay then make sure they are aligned uh, perfectly as you can see the side and it doesn't go all the way to here so it has to trim i don't know should i leave it the way it is but practically that's not how you're supposed to i can use the wall to trim off this part but let's see how we can do it let's say uh, you see it's encroaching here we can use what we cannot we cannot achieve that the only way to achieve this is to 
is to select it and stretch it. Let's find um, what I'm gonna change the selection material I mean tool to this one. Okay, let's go this one. Like I said, when things are are many are too much on top of each other, it's going to be a, a problem to select. In this case, you have to call, I mean tab your hit tab multiple times in your keyboard to identify which component you want to select. So in this case, I can pick this point and stretch it all the way to this corner here, and then I can mirror. I can mirror a copy to this side. Let's stretch this to there. Let's see if they are aligned. Yeah, pretty much accurate. Okay, so this has to repeat the other side. So what I'll do, I'll select this um, and group them. Go back to the ground I and mean roof plane. Select this. Control Shift M to mirror copy to this side. And then because there are other elements that are on are not in the same view or same story is going to give me this so i'll say continue and then uh, let's do that and see but this side we're, go we're going all the way let's ungroup this and uh, let's set this to ground same applies to this one set it to ground and we're gonna stretch it all the way Okay, perfect. So that's pretty much in terms of the modeling of this. Now, if you are to extract um, drawings from this, it's going to be easier for you to do that. But before you extract drawings, let's look at how we can detail our floor plans as well. So if you come here, already we have this, uh, what you've assembled, but there is already again the fitting for the kitchen. Let's quickly do that. I'm going to open the object settings and on the object settings I would go for let's go back to the library folders and let's go for basic library I want uh, the kitchen cabinets right I'll start with the base block uh, for example so let's go forward Arcade has improved dramatically in this setting of the library for kitchen cabinets there's a lot of options to do I'm gonna just um, do a basic settings instead of dwelling deep much. In this case, I want to place a sink on top of this cabinet. So I can come click here on the tab to access the different styles of the sinks that are available here. And then I can assign that. We can go back again. Oh, sorry. I can I come here and find for tabs. Indicate there should be a tab. We can also change the style of your tab as well. Okay, that's basically what that, that I want to set. And then I can just place it here. Once you place it, because it has to be mirrored horizontally to the other side. Let's mirror it uh, like that. Drag it to this window. And then I'm going to increase its width to be one meter. It has to be 1.5, 1.2. .1 All right. That's that's your your sink cabinet and uh let's see the offline it's supposed to be on zero right because this is on zero it's supposed to be on zero as well okay so we can control shift and move a copy to here and then open its settings this time around we're going for a corner base corner and then hit okay so let's drag this by this point to this corner and you can move your sink to flash with that all right so i would continue this way again let's control shift d to bring in this and open its settings this time around, i'm going to just go for a basic straight um cabinet and then hit ok so make sure you control um shift rotate because this black hotspot indicates the back side of your your object so i think it affects it's all it's across all 
of the object in Akhid. The the black dots or the black hot spot indicates the back side of the object. So I'm gonna change this to 1.2. I think 1.2 is too much. Let's make it 900. All right, 900. We can now make multiple copies. But before we make multiple copies, let me write a copy for this, for the corner first, and move it there. Let's see how many would they fit here. Let's see how many would they fit. This is 2.2. 2.2 divided by by three i think each is going to be seven three three i know it's a fine measurement but it can be achieved so let's drag a copy of this today and finish off this line i'm going to pick this control shift r control shift e to rotate sorry and then control d to move it here and uh, let's measure the space and see to that means we can fit how many i think we can fit three of 600 let's say 600 then move this to here move that to the corner there control shift D to get a copy, make it 700. Then make it 700. Check this to the position. Perfect. I think some of this can. What's going on? Pick the measurement of this, it's 685. Let's assign this uh, 685. To measure in arcade, you can just hit M. M, M in your keyboard. All right. And then we have uh, Control Shift M to drag a copy to this side. This side, we're going to just have one around 885. 885. Okay. We're gonna have some island here. The island I'll make it one meter. So it has to be from this by one meter. Alright. So I can now take all this and mirror and copy to the other side. Let's make sure we group them and control shift M to use this to place like that. Okay, this side is just the seating area for the launch. So I'll open its settings. And then I'm going to use the furniture layout and find for the launch seating. And let's just place before we can set. I'm going to rotate it uh, like so. Move it to there. So I'm going to take, I think, let me mirror it vertically. Let's mirror it vertically like that so that we can have these two sitting on the other side let's get rid of one loose um chair so i'm gonna say open and then maybe from the left yeah because we're gonna have uh, some tv projections this side so mirror a copy to the other side okay let's quickly place a tv open its settings set this uh, search for TV. There we go. This is going to be wall mounted. Yes. And then place it here. Control E to rotate. Just plonk it to the wall. Make a copy. There. You can have a base cap cabinet for this as well. Let's just Control Shift D and move a copy there. And let's find under let's find cabinets. Let's go for overhead. There's this TV mounted cabinets. Yeah, there are different options to define here for the shelves. You can decide to have it open or the other side to be shelf, whatever. Let's just hit OK for this and 
I'm gonna have this installed all the way from this corner but make sure it's perfectly positioned all the way from this corner and maybe stitch there okay to appreciate that let me just cut a section my cue here like I'm cutting a section and then hit F5 to isolate let's see see our TV is not well positioned let's say it has to be around 1.5 height no 1.5 is too much I think 1.2 yeah 1.2 so for this if I stretch this all the way it doesn't increase its size so let me just use one and uh, let's stretch it all the way there maybe I can increase the number of uh, rows there's no way I can increase the number of this okay yeah, fine let me just leave it the way it is something like this by default this uh i'll put it with zero okay this is my staircase you come here what happened to the this wall has blocked my staircase all right i see so to solve this issue what i'll do i'll select this wall right click to bring in solid element operation and use the staircase as an operator and upper extrusion is the profile so that you can have this kind of a yeah i think it's better this way i think it's better this way yes okay so let's go to the ground and uh, the TV has to be sitting on top of this so let me just get rid of this I'll right click and display order bring it to front so that it is visible here and then let's apply pick parameters of this by alt in your keyboard and control and alt to inject it to this one so I'm going to maybe get a copy of this to the other side like that perfect so once you're done with this let's move on and do the 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 sanitary fixture the plumbing fixtures we have a door here that's supposed to be opening there so what i'll do i'll pick parameters of this door and hit opening open the settings and then let's go under hinged and i'm going to inject by con control alt and inject on this door so that it can pick parameters of that door but it has double sided which is not the case for this i would want just a normal um uh door leaf and then it shouldn't be double acting it should be single uh, side hand then hit okay so that oh no it has to be 800 which is the width then it's going to be placed here well this thing is thick the door leaf is thick so we're gonna change it let's say okay i think uh, let's find the uh, frame leaf thick yes here we don't want to this is 100 100 is too thick make it 80 then hit ok I think it's still too big let's make it 50 right I think the same applies to these ones they were too huge open the settings and make it uh, under the frame leaf set this to 60 or something yeah all right okay now i'm pretty happy so i can pick parameters of this and bring it to this side as well let's move on and place some sanitary plumbing fixtures open it set object settings and find you can type wc 
wc let's go for this one i'm not gonna set anything there place it that control e to rotate vertically like that then uh, like i said the black side indicates the 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 black dots or hotspot indicates the back side of the element so i'm gonna pick it from here and place it to the edge of the wall make sure it's right on the edge of the wall because uh actually it does allows the um map connection to uh, map equipment this it's it's an map equipment so to have this outlets or connection points of the system so let's make a copy open its settings and let's find for basin basin go for this one and hit ok Control e to rotate it horizontally i would use this point to position to the wall okay you see it has these two points for hot and cold water connection points all right select the two Control shift m to mirror copy to the other side like that all right so we have now the a complete fully furnished um, ground floor so let's quickly apply some little bit of uh, basics in terms of labeling elements windows and doors so to do that i would select all the i'll start with the doors let's pick all the doors and uh go to options no documents under annotations let's find label selected elements so it will place labels to all the selected doors as you can see but this is not the standard we want in terms of the labeling so to select this to change this we need to select it and open its settings but I would, this is a, another tip to select elements so because they are just been placed recently i would hit undo and then redo it will select all the elements that have been placed or redone so open its settings under the type and preview there are different types of um the labels here scroll down and then find the property label there and then we go down and find symbol and custom settings we just want to do the id for our doors so that's what we want to key there if we click on this next page we see we can choose a different shape or a shape for our for our label so to activate the shape you go to textile and then make sure the frame is active so if, if you go back here you'd find now the uh, frame shape parameter is active so you can choose different types of our geometries there so i would want the frame to fit to the height of the text so and let's get it of the leader this is the offset distance between a label and element so i want it to be zero at the moment for now so we can i think we are done with the with the setting hit ok to place the label because we said the label size or the label geometry size has to accommodate the text or it has to fit on the text so that is why it's too big like this so we need to adjust the the coding system of our door so to do that let's go back again and select all the doors and then go to documents and under listing extras let's open element id managers what we want is to define the coding system of our doors here we have the selection criteria so these are available criteria you can group your your doors so by default, I have this criteria where I said all the doors that are on the same width, same height, they should be set as a set same ID. They should be sharing the same ID. So to add here, you can let's just remove this so that you can see. I can add a criteria of say, let's say I'm going to set an, an height and width. So just going to hit add. So from there, you make sure you check set same ID by criteria. You have option to make each and every door unique. Uh, id so i'm going to go to id format because it's the door the it's going to start with the the d on the coding so this is the preview so if you hit change ids you see that there are only three different types of doors and each has total number of doors okay so now you see our our geometry has reduced and we need to take it further and reduce it further still i still believe it's it's it's, it's too big what i can do let's come here under uh, documents find the label tool hit ctrl a and then change this i want to change the height to maybe um two i think i believe still is 
big, let's say 1.5. Yeah, this is perfect. And then now is the issue is the issue of positioning. Where do you want to position this? Because it's the door, it's fine at zero. And then I can manually change these ones. It's not a problem. Let's just drag them out like that. This one here. Yeah, just to be this door, I can make it. Oh, this didn't do. Of course, we'll open this door. 90. Okay. And then I can move this a bit here. Same applies to this ones. Yeah, just to have a clean drawing. It's good to have a clean drawing, uh, like always. And uh, yeah. Okay, so once we are done with labeling or placing this, we need to do it for windows. We only have two windows here. No, we didn't place the window for <laughs> for the toilet. That was a problem. Okay, let's quickly do that. Go back here and uh, activate window for the toilet. I'm going to use this and it should be a top hand. I'm going to set it everything to be full one is to 50 let's open a lot of parameters and uh, go here under model attributes make sure the inform frame is set change this to ivory black and then hit ok let's place it there it's supposed to be positioned inside inside like that inside like that i'm gonna change this to the height of 900 by 800 let's make the height 600 so that on 3d you see something like oh it went down so let's say show all in 3d then i'll, I'll pick this window I don't know why, and this window i'll set the the height to depend on the head out wall base which is 2.1 yeah which is 2.1 all right okay let's go back to the ground floor and we're quickly going to do the some some graphics there so what we need to do again to let's um label all the windows now so i'm going to select all the windows Control a to select all the windows but before we, we already set the the label so it's not it's not ideal for us to come and redo the label for windows as well it's just changing of the geometry so i'll pick the parameter of this label and then go through the documents and under annotations let's label selected so you see it picked the same geometry but uh, we can say control and uh, redo and for the windows we're going to use a different geometry so i'm going to go here and set this to be um, hexagon then hit ok all right because it still looks big because of the the coding system of the window so we need to define that as well let's activate the window tool and control a to select all of them and then under documents listing extras i element id manager so we're going to do the same as well the same parameter same criteria and what we need to do is the id format to change the coding to start with w because the windows and then change okay hit okay there we go so now what we need to do is to change the the position of the the label for the windows so i'm going to open its settings and then i'll say it has to be maybe 200 okay, 200 is too much i think it's supposed to be five negative five negative 20 i think negative 20 would do all right i think it's it, it takes the side of the placement of the window so that means it is a problem i cannot take it out to that even the flip do they have the flip here let me say the opening settings it's fine for 
for the label. Use Texas uniform. What? Okay, let me quickly adjust that. Uh, I'll say this. I've landed the hard way. I'll change next time the placement of the windows because it, it will take this side it indicates the side of the placement of the window these three dots because my position of the window are inside so that means next time when I'm doing windows I should place them outside and then introduce the reveal and to uh, to take them back to the position that I want so I've learned it today and uh, next time I'll try I'll approach this differently but for now I'll just do it manually like that Okay, so we can also play around with the, let's select the slab and come here under floor plan section, activate the cover fill. What I want us to do is to match the, let's match what you call this, uh, the floor finish that you see on 3D here. So I can say, um, let's go back here and choose something different um that will resemble what's on the 3d i think this grid by 30 by 30 it's perfectly done for that let's change the h2 h pen to 101 like that i think it looks congested let's change this to something big like um 600 by 600 yeah perfect this is great right this is great so let's check on this one as well I'm going to take the 2D layout, drag it outside here, and I can quickly now produce um, finish of this by saying um, the the door two, pick the door two, and there's an opening here. There's a door as well here. Same applies to this sides. But I could be, I think I should give you the exercise to complete the first floor and fully finish it the way I did for for ground. So in order to cut this video short, I would have to do that. So in terms of the labeling of the spaces, I would use zones to do that. So let's quickly do that. I'll say zone and uh, I would use the different types of placement of zone. You can use this uh, method whereby you use point by point, which is manual, or you use the manual as well as or you use a rectangle or a rotated rectangle to place or you can pick the inner inner edge of the wall of the rooms most especially areas where the rooms are enclosed but areas like this one by the kitchen here is not enclosed so it will pick the whole building so these two they won't work in this kind of issues you can also make sure you activate place the label as well so i would use this one of rectangle so that i can pick this corner this area and then place a label so I'll do the same for for this for the place a level all right now I don't know why the label is not being placed but it's not a problem we'll fix that so let's try select all the zones i'll activate the zone tool here and then hit Control a what i need to do here is to assign them names this one it's uh this one it's uh is the kitchen and then this will be the the lounge right and then once you are done we need to pick a label Let's pick a label, open in settings. Let's find under type and preview label for zone. Okay, then I can say okay. I can uh, where's my zones? Okay, let's select all the zones. Right click, bring it to front. Open in settings under floor plan and uh, let's activate the the cover fill change this to airspace and change it to be transparent okay 
so that you can be like that so i can now click on the zone on the label where's the label go down here under documents activate the label tool pick that and place that you can come back here and set up or change the display of your label you can change um, this uh, make sure the frame is active so that you can come here under symbol label custom settings you can decide what information you want to display in this case there are a lot of information here cut bit area blah 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 but for this case let's just uh, remove the the label or the frame we can remove the frame by coming here and then under text and style get rid of the frame and become just like this okay i will remove the the number for the zone let's remove the number parameter zone number take it out okay so that we have just this let's make the text to be two all right so select both the label and zone and control m control shift m to mirror copy to the other side because these are identical spaces okay so we have a fully fleshed uh, drawing in terms of uh, placing all the elements so what i need to do is uh, i can just delete so this i forgot i mentioned there's um what you call this a, a landscape area at the back there but before we do that let's look at uh, the the graphic quality of this you can go manually set all the elements according to the pen set you want but i have something that i've created before it's already ongoing check the link on the description to do that so I'm, it's using combination graphic override combinations so if i click here and open this you can import let's find the file that i want to use so let's do that product line flow plan graphic override combinations and it comes with different versions as you can see i would use 26 so these are xml files that you need to load in order to define your project in this case boom a single click changes everything i can now get rid of this line a single click changes the quality and you can toggle around, toggle between the different qualities as you can see so that is what i like about this instantly you just have quality what i can change and this applies to you again if you want to adjust some or customize this into your own style you can come here because i want to make this red more outstanding more prominent so i'll come here and then it's already selected what i'll do is uh open its uh or edit rules and then from here what i need to do is go down the go down then i want i want the red one the red rule set this to be dark red same applies to this one that click and then hit ok hit ok yeah now the, it looks great it looks great what i need to do is to place a car at the parking just a 2d um, object so open object settings and uh, you can type 2d car pick this one there's a style that i want i think it's style 3 so if you check on 3 that's not the one style 2 preview and positioning ah it's not the one let's say for this one I'll hit ok and then place it there let's control e to rotate like that and place it here okay so now we have a fully fleshed um, drawing you can place some dimensions to place dimensions and i can get uh, there are different ways you can do it manually or use automated way so i like to my approach is this because of the experience that i've learned so i will select dimension that is manual way of doing it select dimension under documents find dimension and then you can click elements like that just click elements and right click to place your dimension like that the other way is using automated way so whereby i select the elements that i want to dimension so in this case make sure you choose only one side don't want to place dimensions all in once because it will mess up your drawing so i'll do this and then i'll say 
go to documents under annotations let's automatic dimensioning exterior dimensions these are different roles or different uh, dimension roles of you you can decide to have whatever number you can but for me i'll go with this one and then this down here is the dimension of openings which basically um uh, captures the width the width of the open instead of the endpoints so this is the distance between the dimension rows you can place the dimensions for fourth side but this will give you a lot of um, problems because it will have a lot of errors to resolve once you've placed i'll hit ok and then i pick the side and space for the second point there and then i can now come and place my windows there i mean my dimensions here all right see i can select all the rows like that and come here under settings and set it to be this height okay and then i can in maybe increase it to maybe two something like that and scroll down there change the point to maybe a dots hit okay didn't change something like a dot yeah that's basically how you can quickly place the dimensions but let's see the side you could see they are not on um they are on meters instead of millimeters but i was using meters so that could be assigned on your your drawing settings sorry um you can come here and say project preferences working units they are on millimeters no i think it's because of if you come here under view map and then open it start open its settings that's the reason why i like working on the view map is because you can the difference between the view map and project map is because here is the permanently um viewpoints of your project that is being on a tree structure whatever that you are doing is a community but this side you can customize and rename and create more and define the settings like for this for example the settings of this i can say let's open its settings down here i can say i want the layer combination to be this the scale to be that and the if you go down the graphic override to be uh, gray and red gray so the 2d and 3d documents i want the dimensions to be um, plain millimeters and then hit ok so you see now your dimensions are fine this also the other fine but what we need to do is the area the area area has to be on millimeters so what i need to do is come here options like i said area has to be on meters and come here under calculations and units what i would what i'll do i'll say go back here i'll pick this this one change it to square meters and save store this as your i'll say ms beam and hit ok hit ok i can come here and say under the settings of this uh, uh view and then use the ms beam newly created units all right so that i lock this um permanently so in terms of the okay now i can bring i can bring in closer what you call these elevation markers because they're far away let's just bring them closer to their drawing something like that this one is fine okay and uh yes the photo dimension i think you've, you've seen how to dimension like this side if you want to dimension it as well we do the same pick this side and go to documents creative so the annotation and automatic dimension exterior so we're gonna do the same draw a line on that side you want to dimension and then place like that you can now select the dimension rows and set this to dots or make sure the the witness line is short or whatever way you want it you can also change the height even if you change the scale to change everything according to, like that okay so i'll do the same to the side as well if if in case you've missed it let's select all the the walls to dimension and then 
documents annotation ex automatic exterior okay draw the line to the side of where you want to place your dimension and then place it there i think this is going to move outside and then you can click all your dimension rows change the to architectural dots open its settings and make sure the custom height is active okay that's basically that in terms of uh, the three if you check on 3d so let's move the side we can toggle around as well for for the thing we forgot to place the railings on the 3d so that's what i wanted to to come here and do let's open the first floor and then i'm going to activate the railing tool and then let's click here on this arrow for the favorites i'm going to select what's already available here which is this one the metal one what i want to do is to increase its height let's open its settings i want to increase its height to let's find here the height to 1.5 i think it's 1.5 yes 1.5 and then this is going to be at a distance of 1.2 okay and then hit okay let's place it from here to the right click and then hit okay make sure you, you fix this for, for railing always it always extend this further i can or I can come here and define that. Let's find uh, ends. Make this to be 50. Yes. This side is fine. I don't know why the other ones remained. Ends connections. Post. I don't know why the other ones remained. Okay, but let's control shift M and mirror I copy to the other side. But before we do that, let's appreciate it in 3D. I want to make it black as the, the same finish for for the doors or for the for the doors and windows. So I'll come here and make sure everything is uh let's start with the segment, come there. Okay, top and rail. Um, click here to find. I think it's yeah to find override. Let's go for paint ivory. Do the same for the handrails. Let's open the page for 3D representation. Let's override both the rail and the fixing. Paint ivory. Paint ivory. We do the same for the rails. Let's open the 3D representation, override that, paint ivory, the inner post, I'm going to do it as well. Let's open that, override, paint ivory, balusters, let's override, yes, panels, we don't have panels for this, and hit OK. We remain with ones want to change which is the post post overwrite and paint ivory hit ok there you go all right we have everything now in place we can mirror this to the other side control shift m to mirror let's bring it to this side right okay once the project is done it's time for me to present it and share with the rest of um, the team members so the best way is to use the layout book it's the only way to share the project by default like it has different um, default uh, layers created here but this is how the structure of the layout book we have the uh, layouts which are sheets at the top and then here is the masters the masters are the ones that host the title block so we need to create the title block first or the master first so i'm going to come here 
down below here and hit on new let's set a new i'll say ms beam layout um the size will be a1 a1 is fine and the orientation of the sheet will be landscape and then once i done with this you can hit okay you can also change or set the margins of your or the border of your sheet but for me i think it's fine at 15 millimeters around so i'll hit create once i've created a new master i would have to load now the title block so i have a pdf uh, title block so let me just open the folder and uh, drag and drop it onto my master oh sorry there will be a problem here let's say let's say drag yo there is a problem here <clears throat> so i think because i have two arcade opens opened so i need to do it in a other way around so let's go for open and then import no i think we need to open an image let's open an image open an image I don't know. let me just do this and then do that all right so that i can drop i can drag this let's see to here okay then maximize it once it's done it's already a pdf that is on an a1 um, landscape uh, size paper size so i need to get rid of this um, label or the title so i'll scroll down here on the info box let's find the title let's change this to no title and then uh, we need to align this by drag i'll drag it to the corner here and then i'll right click to explode this into a current view once this window pops out just ignore everything and hit ok all right so i can now delete the background image to remain with uh, the 2d stuff or 2d elements as you can see all right okay so now you would see the significance of using the info box so let's suspend or activate suspend group and then under project details we already set this information or keyed in information from from the project info so what i'll do i'll double click on this um, line or text to open it and then assign it a auto text or insert an auto text i'll go here it will give me all the parameters under project info and other tools and as you can see what i'll do i would uh, it's a powerful tool um uh, auto text so you can drive any information about element in any parts of your project be it an elevation uh, floor plan uh, details sheets everywhere so what i want here is the building um information or the project details there's a project name let's edit you see that's the information remember we keyed in earlier on when we started this project so that's basically how you can do that so i, I won't do much here i just wanted to show you the how you can uh, so in terms of the layout id i would also assign it an auto text let's open it and then insert auto text we're going to say layout under layout let's find layout id and then add okay same applies to the drawing name we go back we find the the drawing our folder find the drawing name and add You see, and we've added twice. Okay. So this is basically the information that we need to do. And uh, once you create, or if you want now to create a new layout, you come down here, and then you say new layout. I would say uh, MS Beam project. Let's now assign the master that we created, which is MS Beam. Then hit OK or create. There we go. You would see now it will give the layout um id but of yet we haven't had any drawing placed on this layout that is why it's not showing the drawing name but once now we say we're placing the ground floor let's drag and place the ground floor in here you see now it started to say the drawing that is being placed here is the ground floor so what i'll do i'll select the drawing and then pick the edges of the drawing to crop 
unnecessary information or unwanted information like that okay and then control d to position it on the center of this and i can also as um offset the edge from this side and then from that side as well okay so if you go down here there is a title of this drawing so this is by default architect style so we need to customize this to our own style so let's open its settings from the settings we need um, to come down here under title and then let's open the or find a different type of a title to use <clears throat> sorry about that i would want to use the linear and then scroll down here under title tag but also under drawing title what you need to do is to make it uh, uh unlink it to the position and then set the width to be 150 like that and then i'll make it to be aligned centrally to the drawing and then if you move to the next page there is um, a, a marker that we can change or use i'll go with the circle then if you move to the next page as well here are the contents that we're going to display i don't have problem with that yeah so basically that so here is the pens that you can change to to define your temp your title graphically then you hit ok that's what you get from here and this can be adjustable as well you can uh, sorry you can uh, use this stretch and move bring it somewhere here same applies to the name you can do that ground floor you can align them the way you want you can still still also reduce the size of of this like that oh no let me undo um let's use uh I think this one is fine okay i think i'm worried about the text height it's too small let's open its settings and uh, let's go back here i'm gonna override it let's override it to five then okay position it nicely like that all right Okay, so um, let's go back to our model and see what we can extract from this. I love to add the perspective into my drawing. So I would find a perfect view for this. And uh, I think this side, I can go back to the ground floor. Let's position or set up a camera under uh, viewpoints let's find a camera tool here i'm gonna position it from here from the front and then draw it like you're drawing a line with two points and then you can select the camera so these are the heights of the camera so i want the elevation to be at eye level which is around 1.5 same applies to this parameter 1.5 so if i right click and then say show um let's right click it here show selection in 3d it will open the camera angle like that okay but i wanted something on this side let's see i'm looking for this view here yeah, this view and then if you can if you want to convert this into an isometric view you'd have to go to window and under palettes let's find no under toolbars let's find 3d visualization tools this window this toolbar has um the the perspective uh, variation so we can also convert this to an exon matrix just like that but i don't like it i don't like this angle i can come here under settings let's find maybe this angle okay but still this one is not the one i want let's find this all right you can play around with this and try to see you can also do the elevation which is this it looks great as well but uh i'm looking for perspective all right once you are happy with this i can now convert this into a 3d document so that i can use it into my layouts I right click and then say new 3d documents i'll just give it 
a perspective name like that it will take a second to generate a 3d document once it's done you can come here under 3d documents it's been added there let's right click on it and open the 3d document settings what i want is to set the cover the surface cover fill foreground to be active and uh, what else again let's maybe activate the shadows then hit ok wait for a second to update the changes all right so this is basically what i wanted to see the textures within your walls and so forth all right so i can come back to the to the layout and let's close off the this window and drag and drop that um, perspective or axonometric in order for you to match the title i would pick parameters of this uh, uh, drawing by alt and hold and click on the drawing then control and alt to inject it to this so it will pick the title settings of that and apply it to our new drawing so i can now trim off the edge by offsetting edge like that same applies to here and I can move it, control D to move it to the top there. I can increase its scale by stretching it that way. Right. Okay. So that's basically it. Maybe let's just crop the top part and drag it to align it with the align it with the plane all right so it will be also registered here as a perspective drawing so so as you populate this layout with drawings it will register automatically there so that's the key part of the using this type of um parametric text or auto text so even if i come here and adjust the position of the layout in the list automatically to pick the hierarchy on the on the list of drawing so if i move it at the top here it will change to zero zero to a zero one that's what i like about that all right so from here in order to convert this as a drawing you just hit file save as let's convert it as a pdf go down here as a file type let's change this to pdf and uh, i'm gonna go to page options it's already it's, it, will, it will take the measurements or the the, the paper size from the layout so every time you come here you'd see it's the right size that you've specified from your your layouts and masters so i'll hit ok and then under documents options there's nothing really much to do here other than changing the 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 uh the style is either you can say color black and white normally i use color because i define my pens already within the architect what i see in that kit is what i want to see as the final result so let's hit ok and then uh, i'm gonna just if you want to um open the file after saving you can hit, uh, check this box then you hit save there we go it opened now we have this let's appreciate the results here as you can see i'm, I'm impressed with the results so that's basically it how you can assemble a project from scratch in archicad you can also add uh, some elevations within the presentation maybe maybe reducing the size of uh, this 3d image and uh, use uh, and use elevation and put elevation as well so yeah that's basically if you manage to make it as far as to this video let me take this opportunity to thank you and i really really appreciate your 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 support guys and make sure you like this video share it with someone you think it will be beneficial and make sure you subscribe also if you've been watching our videos without uh, subscribing and go down to the comment section and make sure you comment if there's anything that i've skipped or you need clarity or explanation let me know in the comment section so that i can do so i'll be waiting for every comment to respond to and um, all the assets and materials files that have been used for this project are down in the link below just find the link below and then go download those files please 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 support 
our our pc so just buy a coffee for us that's it thank you very much i'll see you in the next video